All right, so here we have a two-dimensional explosion. We have a firecracker placed inside a coconut of mass M, initially at rest on a frictionless floor, blows the coconut into three pieces that slide across the floor. An overhead view is shown in the figure. Um, piece C with a mass of 0.3 M has a final speed VFC of five meters per second. What is the speed of piece B with a mass of 0.2 M? And B is what is the speed of piece A? Now, first and foremost, um, the mass of piece A has to be 0.5 M because 0.3 M plus 0.2 M, which is the mass of C and B respectively, are um, those added together are 0.5. And then the total mass of all three pieces has to be 1 M. So that means that the mass of piece A, mass A is 0.5 M. Now, another thing that we need to do here is we need to set a coordinate system because we know that this is a two-dimensional explosion here. So um, because it's two-dimensional, I want to put my coordinate system onto one of those vectors. And the reason for this is it makes our calculation much simpler. If I put one velocity vector just in the direction of one of those coordinates so that it only has one component, so it either has an x component only or a Y component only. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're gonna put it um, on the V final B just because that's like pretty much straight down. So therefore, I'm gonna have my Y component here and then my X component I will have there. And let's, put, oops, let's do that again. Y component is here, X component is there. There we go. That looks good. So this is my Y. This is my X. Now, again, here I can see that there is an angle of 130 degrees between the final velocity vector of C and the final velocity vector of B. Now, because I know that um, the angle between the positive X axis and the negative Y axis is 90 degrees, then I can find that angle um, between the positive X axis and the final velocity of C by just subtracting 90 from 130. So 130 minus 90 is 40 degrees. So that means that this angle right here is going to be 40 degrees, which I have drawn on there now. And then um, also I can see that the angle between the final velocity vector of A and the final velocity vector of C is 100 degrees. So that means I have 180 degrees for that whole, this whole thing right here, right? Between those, what am I saying? Between the negative um, X and the positive X axis. So because of that, if I add 100 plus 40 together, all I have to do is then subtract that from 180. So 180 minus 140 is also 40. And that will be the angle from the uh, velocity final a vector to that negative x-axis. So I have also a 40 degree angle right here. And we need that because we need to break down these vectors into their x and y components. So um, I know the final velocity of this uh, final velocity c vector. So because I know that magnitude, I can break that down into x and y components with numbers. So what we get here is we get um, the, and let's do this in say purple, why not? So we have the final velocity C vector is five meters per second. I also know that this angle right here is 40 degrees. So my final velocity C Y component is going to be five times the sine of 40. So five times sine of 40 is equal to 3.21 meters per second. And then final velocity CX component is going to be five times the cosine of 40, which is 3.83 meters per second. Okay. So um, I now have those two components there, final velocity in the y direction, final velocity in the x direction. <clears throat> Now we can see here 
that my final velocity of b is only in the y direction. So I'm going to put that in a different color. Let's do green. Final velocity of b in the y direction is just final velocity b. And I'm just going to keep it as final velocity b because we don't know anything else about that direction. And then we also have that final velocity of b in the x direction is 0 because there's no x component of the final velocity of b. And then we're going to do the other velocity as well, so final velocity of a. Now, final velocity of a is up this way. I know that this angle right here is also 40 degrees, and we just call this final velocity a. So my final velocity of a in the x direction is going to be a negative final velocity of a times the cosine of 40. And so we can actually just do the cosine of 40 and get this in terms of final velocity of a. So final velocity of a in the x direction will be a negative 0.77 final velocity a. And then final velocity in the y direction, I'm just going to draw an arrow, final velocity in the y direction will be of a in the y direction will be final velocity of a times the sine of 40. And this is positive because it's upwards. And so we get final velocity a in the y direction is equal to sine of 40 is 0.64. So 0.64 be final a. Now, the reason I'm doing all this is because now we know that momentum has to be conserved, right? Which means that initial momentum in the x direction is equal to final momentum in the x direction, and um, initial momentum in the y direction is equal to final momentum in the y direction. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split this up into x and y directions. <clears throat> so what we get here, let's start with x. Initial momentum in the x direction equals final momentum in the x direction. Now, if we look at our x direction, we only have the final velocity of c in the x direction and the final velocity of a in the x direction. That final velocity of b is only in the y direction, so we're only looking at a and c here. So this is going to be mass um, of a times initial velocity of a in the x direction plus mass of c times initial velocity of, whoops, initial velocity of c in the x direction equals mass of a times final velocity of a in the x direction plus mass of c times final velocity of C in the x direction. Of course, I can also add b here, but I know that there is no x component of velocity of b at all. It's only in the y direction, which is why I left it out. Now here, I know that the initial velocities are both zero, so I'm going to cancel those out to zero. So our total initial momentum is zero, and I could have just put that as well, but I wanted you guys to see that. Um, and then what we can do here is we can now plug in our numbers and or equations that we have here. So I have mass of A was 0.5 big M times final velocity of A in the X direction, which is this right here, our negative 0.77 V final A, plus mass of C, which was 0.3 M big M, times final velocity of c in the x direction, which was 3.83 meters per second. And that's a positive. Okay, now big M's cancel out here. So what we get is 0.5 times point, negative 0.77, and here we get a negative 0.385 v final a plus 0.3 times 3.83, and we get 1.149 there. And then I'm gonna add that three point, sorry, point three, 0 0.385 V final A to both sides, and then just divide that 1.149 divided by 0.385 in order to find final velocity of A. 2.98 meters per second. So that is our final velocity of A.
which is about three. Okay. And then um, we're going to do the same thing for the y direction. Now up here, um, we found letter B first. So it doesn't really matter um, if you find A or B first. So we found B first. Now we're going to find part A. We want to know what is the speed of piece B. So we're going to do the same thing um, for part A now. So our momentum initial in the y direction is equal to momentum final in the y direction. Momentum initial is just zero because everything's at rest. And we saw that in our previous equation that we did. Um, but here I'm not going to plug in anything. I just know that my initial momentum is zero. And then my final momentum in the y direction is going to be mass of A times final velocity of A in the y direction plus mass of b times final velocity of b in the y direction plus mass of c times final velocity of c in the y direction. Okay, so here we get zero is equal to mass of a, which was 0.5 big M, times final velocity of a in the y direction, which was 0.64 times v final a. So here we get 0.64 times V final A, which we just found to be 2.98 meters per second. All right, plus um, our mass of B, which was 0.2 big M, times final velocity of B, which we can see here is just final velocity of B. Um, because we know that the y direction, it, it's that's our only component of the final velocity of b. So for final velocity of b in the y direction, we're just going to put final velocity b plus mass of c, which was 0.3 big M, times final velocity of c in the y direction, which is 3.21 meters per second. <clears throat> So here we get um, 0.5 times 0.64 times 2.98. Um, so we get 0.9536 there, plus, and here masses, sorry, big M's all cancel out, plus 0.2 V final B plus 0.3 times 3.21, so 0.963. And then I'm going to add those two numbers together, so 0.963 plus 0.9536, and then subtract that to the other side. So I end up getting negative 1.9166 equals 0.2 V final V. And then to find v final b, I just divide both sides by 0.2, and I get that the final velocity of b is equal to a negative 9.583, so about 9.6 meters per second. And that makes sense that it's a negative number because the final velocity of b is directly in the negative y direction. So it makes sense that I got a negative 9.6 meters per second for that answer.